friends and reaching out to our audience and working with artists. So at the moment, it's hopeful. In the beginning, it was, it was almost like a big shock because I personally have enough experience in managing crisis given my former you know, work in Istanbul Jazz Festival. However, this is a global crisis and to navigate you know, the results and to understand how we can respond to it creatively was actually more work than you would imagine. Yeah. So uh, between March and September, even beyond, some shows and events either postponed or canceled or moved, most of them rescheduled for 2021 and beyond, you would assume what we are doing at the back burner isn't as much as normal times, but yes, we were really busy in trying to mitigate the consequences to make sure that we are connected to our artists, our audiences, make sure we can be of service, of help to the communities that we work with, that we can provide the ongoing platform for artistic creativity. And yeah, we immediately started imagining, of course, we always had the aspiration for evolving or improving our digital output. But I think this current situation was a fast forward button that yes. sort of brought us to that area a bit quicker than we thought. Almost like it has been for normal office working, hasn't it? You know, where companies yeah. have been reluctant to let their staff work from home. Yeah. And now they've discovered actually it's, it's quite a good thing. So let's specifically talk about the EFG London Jazz Festival. Those who go regularly know that it's absolutely huge with literally hundreds of events on over that 10 day period. So what is going to happen for 2020? Uh, first of all, we wanted to create a model where we have a festival in some shape or form, definitely, because we were lucky enough not to be caught in the storm, not to have to cancel our festival. I'm, you, you know, sending my good vibes to my friends, my dear colleagues internationally, but also locally as well. Unfortunately, Love Supreme Festival had to postpone their plans for next year. Likewise, we out here. So heartfelt you know love and good vibes to them and good luck for next year but during this time we had enough leeway to think about how we can create a mixed model which can respond to whatever the landscape is in november obviously there are two extremes it could either be yes the lockdown is being eased step by step live music is now possible so that we can plan towards uh, exclusive live experiences which are filmed and streamed on our festival platform but on the other hand we will have enough rich con uh, content bespoke videos special commissions from local and international artists where we can stream this wonderful new work from artists creative engagement projects webinars talks uh, on our festival platform therefore the festival will happen in some shape or form we are aiming to go back to the point where we can at least produce some live shows because the artists also miss the interaction yeah. between the audiences, not just playing to the cameras. So being optimistic will, will, then, uh, will, uh, yeah. uh, uh, so being optimistic, there would actually be some gigs that people could go, actually go to. At the moment, the plan is whenever we get the guidance of, yes, live music can go ahead, we have the plan, we have the conversations with partner venues, we have the ABC scenarios where we can pick one of them and push the button to uh, develop and present. So, okay. yeah, hopefully. So, um, of course, one can look online to see what those events are. So if it were to change, would that be the way that you found out about it? You just looked on the website and something that was originally going to be a live concert is now going to be an online stream. Is that how you would be able to be that flexible in the run up to November? Yes. Uh, first of all, we have to make sure that we, the filming is definitely in place so that the artistic output is there as a part of EFG London Jazz Festival. The program is interesting, exciting, creative, and also it is inspiring to other partners, London clubs, other producers, venues, so that we have an overall uh, brilliant content online. But if audiences are possible, it will be possible. As, as we say, 
we we just released the press release, which was a bit different from the traditional way we <laughs> announce our festival. By this time, probably 99% of the festival would be announced and on sale. In September, we would do a launch event with all the details of the festival. Uh, however, this year, we chose to send out the messaging of we're here, we want to do it, EFG London Jazz Festival will happen in some shape or form. And we'd like to encourage artists and partners to produce and make plans towards that. And we're here at the end of a phone line or a Zoom call to discuss ideas. Mm, okay. Think, yeah, it, Do you have any names for us yet as to who is going to perform, Pelling? Um, I wouldn't share names at this stage, but what I can say, we obviously gave priority to the artists who we had already confirmed for a live setting. Uh, and if they are international artists, we are mainly talking about film that location content where they can produce uh, the, the videos bespoke to EFG London Jazz Festival with the technical requirements. But if it's local artists, we are inviting them to produce some new creative stuff as a response to the current situation. I'm sure that's been met with a lot of excitement. There's, there have been many musicians who have spent the last couple of months with incredible ideas going around in their heads and they can't wait to get them out to an audience. Yeah, every single artist we talk to or artists or their teams, representatives, they just, you know, uh, they were really supportive and also really appreciated the idea that there is some, some sort of a light at the end of the tunnel if we can, but we are abiding by the science, the rules, regulations, what our partner venues are telling us. So we are working towards that knowledge. So making the best of what is available to us. So I'm assuming that people will have to buy tickets for these events. So what kind of time scale have you got towards the, the ticketing aspect of it? We are hoping to announce the program in September. Uh, the second half of September and the ticketing aspect of it will come uh, nearer the time towards the shows, given the capacities may be different than the usual, you know, okay. show capacities. And we are hoping to have some virtual tickets uh, attached to some bespoke content so that the artist's efforts are rewarded and, you know, free online content isn't necessarily something that is, you know, taken for granted we should we should we should build a platform to reward these efforts so indeed i think there's a general sense that people want to put back in if they're in a position to do so they appreciate the fact that some of these guys have been making no money for for months on end so it'll be very good to be able to do something uh penny we'll we'll hear back from you then when when we've got more detail in the meantime i'm going to keep everything crossed just to make sure <laughs> Uh, that uh, we're not in, lo in lockdown and it is the most optimix optimistic scenario where we'll actually get some actual proper live concerts that we can go and see. But uh, to, well done so far for all, all the efforts you made. Thanks very much for joining us. Thanks for having me.